People deluded. Now, Arsenal yesterday won three goals to one against Burnley, and it might not have been the most glamorous of games. This is the game with the most talking points, but I've watched the game again. As you guys know, I typically watch the games twice. And there are some takeaways tactically from the game, or just some talking points that we all could have missed first time round. Firstly, I'd like to speak about... Oh, and it's got a bit smudged, but first of all, I'd like to actually speak about the movement of our front men, well, including Meza Ozil. As you can see here, people, in fact, no, you can't. Not the best of examples, but we've got an O, Ozil, Ababian, and an L for Lacazette. We've obviously got Cola and an AM for Maitland Niles. What I loved about these lot, and I'll show a simpler example in a bit, but the movement, I liked, obviously you saw Lacazette, obviously Lacazette likes to get onto the ball, so there's an arrow there to drop deep, there's an arrow here, obviously you saw him pulling out into the left-hand channels, um, linking up well with Kolo, as you, a number of the front men did essentially, we done, we done very well down the left-hand side, Maitland, Niles and Kolo, very underrated in terms of the approach and how much they allowed our attacking players to shine in that game, Maitland, Niles the same, he had a lot of space, he was connecting well, Obviously, Aubameyang was dropping deep. Aubameyang went into both channels. Primarily, he's going to go on to the third centre-half. And then you've got Ozil. Now, again, I'll show you it again in a sec. But, Meza Ozil. Now, we know in a game against Burnley, we're typically going to have the majority of possession. We're typically going to dominate the game. So, we can arguably be a bit more lackadaisical in a, in a defensive approach to a degree and just flood more men into the box. I mean, it was a lovely... We'll talk about the goals um, after, but... Um, yeah, it was a lovely bit of movement from Ozil. You saw Ozil linking up here in the free roll, free roll linking up very well with his, with his strikers. Obviously, as well, oh, it's going to look horrid, horrible. But you actually saw him pulling over onto this hand side. You saw him dropping deep. It's just it's lovely when Ozil's got a free roll. Again, I'm making it messy, people. But if Ozil's taking up all of these positions, and again, it's not the clearest, I'll do it again. Uh, these are spaces for Aubameyang to exploit. Basis for Lacazette, like you saw for the first for the first goal, Aubameyang is unmarked essentially comes out of nowhere. So that was very good. Um, to make that to just while that's fresh in the mind, just to keep it here. Um, obviously, people, you would have. I thought we would line up with three at the back and two degree until I actually saw us play. It looked like three at the back, and we'll talk more about the formation. But if we just focus on the strikers, you saw or the attacking men, you saw our lineup a bit more like this. Now this is Maitland Niles and Cola respectively. We've just got a midfielder here for, um, well, nothing more than just decoration. Obviously, you've got Aubameyang and Lacazette. You would have thought like, Aubameyang would have been here and that would have been our three. And you did see that to a degree, especially when we was in the first 10, 20, probably 10 minutes when we was going forward. You saw that. But more often than not, if we move the fullbacks back, what you actually saw was Ozil here, Aubameyang and Lacazette. Now, he also obviously had the great free roll to link up with Cola, and Cola was able to get um, to exploit the left-hand side. Maitland Niles the same. In fact, even for the goal, you could see it's like it's like Maitland Niles there, Ozil here, um, Aubameyang, no, not Aubameyang, Lacazette. There's some all different stuff going on over here. So he's able to really disrupt them in, in that regards, man. And games like that, you can see why you need a creative spark or Meza Ozil or something like that. Apologies for shaking the screen there, people. On the topic of our shape... Um, the formation has a lot of talking points, but generally our shape, in my opinion, was a bit like this. Now, you've obviously got, again, you've got the fullbacks on either side. Our centre-halves, obviously, Leno's actually been rubbed out by my hand, but I put Leno's name up there. You've obviously got our three midfielders. Now, at times, you saw, you, you've got, oh, sorry, you've got Ozil, you've got Aubameyang, and you've got Lacazette, whoever you want to put where. You've got them. Now, again, spaces to exploit. Spaces to exploit. Ozil playing through balls in, helping them press as a three, and then obviously when our fullbacks were going, we're essentially pressing as a four or five. That helped us. The midfield now. If we just focus purely on this midfield, people, what you typically saw, um, you saw either Xhaka dropping deep to collect the ball, and then Guendouzi and El Nene were able to get further up the pitch. All you saw, mate, all you saw El Nene doing that. So what you more would have seen. Oh, I really hate using my hand on that. You obviously saw a three there, people. You actually saw this at times. You saw one and then two. Or at times, you even saw when we... Especially when we had the lion's share of possession, you saw two up there. And Gwendozi prim primarily helping attack. And obviously, that's helping with us press. So, I felt our shape was good today. Um, what else was I going to speak about? There's no need to show it. In fact, there's, there's nothing to arguably show about it. But on the topic of the goals... Um, 
from from tw- the twelfth minute and forty twelve minutes and forty four seconds, I counted eighteen passes to the fourteenth minute or whenever the ball actually hit the back of the net with a bambi, and it was a lovely bit of play, patient bit of play. It actually all developed from Burnley because of how we're playing against Burnley, where they can't get out. We, we're not enabling them to find an out ball, and I think Hendrick Jeff Hendricks actually did well. They actually were doing all right considering we were pressing them. Jeff Hendricks lost the ball, and like I said, it was eighteen passes, and it was a lovely pass from Ozil. Ozil obviously, Ozil's pass is a pick of the bunch. Kola done very well. Aubameyang uh, ultimately, is, this is what we need. Someone that just puts the ball in the back of the net, and he did it. Um, for our second goal as well, was, um, I've got it written down. I think there was a handful of passes for two 0 It was it was a lovely counter attack. It was about twenty seven seconds to thirty seconds. Four passes essentially from um, someone plays it into um, no. Gwendozi obviously plays it forward to Kola. Kola takes a touch and plays it into someone. Eventually, it finds. I believe Lacazette who finds Aubameyang and then it is, it's, it's essentially in the back of the net. That was a lovely goal. Similar circumstances for our third as well, to be fair with you. It was around four touches or so. Um, Awobi, um, third goal, sorry. Awobi obviously finished it. In fact, before that, I thought Awobi would have scored when Kola, I mean not Kola, Socrates, lovely driving run, splitting defence and attacking. Socrates is a very underrated player, man. And I, I knew he had a good game yesterday, but after watching the game again, he really had a good game. Um... On the topic of us of us conceding as well, it was a poor it was a poor goal to concede. Initially, the warning signs were there. Um, admittedly, I cannot find my notes wherever the hell I wrote it. People, apologies, but I do remember the goal we can we actually conceded. It was a poor it was a poor goal to it was actually a very poor goal in my opinion to concede. Was sw- was switching off. I felt Gwendozi could have done. A, why did I do that? Doesn't oh gosh, I need another one. Gwendozi could have done better. It's a weak pass from him. I felt um, Torreira could have been a bit more switched on. Xhaka as well. Xhaka's completely unaware. Um, what's his name? Socrates. I think Socrates gets done up because he looks like he's going to deal with it and he obviously loses his foot in. And Ashley Barnes is able to pull it in and take advantage of it. Um, yeah, so that was a, from, a burnt, from our point of view. It was, a, it was essentially a cheap goal to concede, to be honest with you people. And we could have done better in that regards. I'm just checking to make sure I haven't missed anything else. Oh. Um, one thing I would say as well, initially, initially as well, we were being um, what can I say? We were being hit three v three and and two v two, especially in the first half. And although Burnley ultimately didn't make it make it count for them, they were things to worry about. One thing that I keep seeing with our centre halves and I sort of make Lenals and not make Lenals, sorry, Socrates and Monreal. They're obviously being told to peel off as far away from each other as possible, whether that's in an attacking, obviously not in the defensive sense, but in an attacking sense, because the keepers got here, they've peeled off. Most centre-halves peel off anyways, but they've peeled off. So that allows Xhaka or whoever in midfield to come and collect the ball off them, to which someone in the other team will have to follow them, and obviously spaces will awake. But one thing that is scaring me, people, you've seen Ings exploit it. You saw actually... um, is it Chris Wood? He, oh, no, Ashley Barnes, sorry, of Burnley exploited, but they just weren't good enough. And you saw Kane do it in, in the week, essentially, or Spurs do it in the week. We need to really... This, it, I think it comes down to communication. The keeper's got to be the eyes and ears for them, and they have to look over their shoulders, because that time, Barnes was in between them. And I was thinking, on another day, Burnley did better at, at set pieces and in the air than us. If they play it in and it's a lovely whip ball, things can, things can, certain things can happen for them, in my opinion. Um... Obviously, we had a formation change of sorts when substitutions happened as well. There isn't really much to to speak about, to be honest with you. Oh yeah, and we can't rem- we can't forget um in the build up to to two one as well. I forgot to say Maitland Niles. He's not a fullback in it. You've got to look over your shoulder. Can I even draw it? I don't even think it's possible for me to even draw it, people. I don't even know how I would make it make sense. But just at, just to attempt it, yeah, it's not the best of examples. But say this is Maitland Niles, and this is this is your man. This is the man you have to mark, people. Yeah. You have to be goal side. If if think about it, if I'm marking, they have to be on this side to me. They can't be on the wrong side. He's not a fullback, so he's not playing them. He's playing on on the wrong side of him. So obviously, when the ball comes into the box, he's not. He's Ben Mee's better than better than him in the air, anyways. But he's on the wrong side. In fact, I don't even need this. Obviously, if you're not goal side, most of you understand football. What I'm talking about. If you're not obviously goal side, it's not going to help you. He's not the best of, of defenders. He's not the best of fullbacks. He's not better in the air than Ben Ben Mee. So if he's if he's onside, he gives himself half a chance. But Maitland Niles wasn't on wasn't wasn't um, wasn't playing him on the right side. So he wasn't. Uh, yeah, you guys know what I'm getting at now. By that point, it was um he was on the wrong side of him. He obviously loses out in the air to Ben Mee. The ball is flicked down. I felt um Gwendozi was a bit soft in that. Um Torreira, I wouldn't attribute Torreira, but he's near to it. Could have sniffed danger in that regard. Socrates loses his foot, and Jacker again isn't un- is completely unaware to a degree. 
it was a it was a sloppy goal for us to concede, especially in the build up to it. That's the only bad thing I could probably look at in regards to us versus Burnley. But what can I, like what, what really can I say, man? I was impressed with the goals we scored purely because eighteen passes for one, two um four passes apiece for the for, for the last two, um twenty seven seconds um for one of the goals where we counter counter attacked, and I think we're, we're slowly but surely we're getting there in ter in terms of what Unai wants to implement. Again, it's Burnley, so we can't get too ahead of ourselves. We've got a tough game in midweek against Brighton. I say tough because we're being stretched to the bare bones of our squad right now. Obviously, we've got Liverpool coming up as well, and the form they're in, boy, it's looking kind of peak in that regards. But what can I say, man? And we can't, we can't not talk about Cola, man. Like, in fact, I've spoken about Cola, but just, just to pay homage to the guy, bro. Like, um, in fact, you, you could, you, you could really use this. I think I've done it already, but just to further highlight and praise a guy for the way he was playing. If it cuts out, people, I really haven't added anything else out of note, so don't feel any way. But what I liked, Phil Barsley got stressed that whole game. The whole Burnley side did, but Barsley was stressed. The, Peter, one reason Ozil's free roll was able to work so finely is because of our fullbacks. If our fullbacks didn't create space, think about it, people. How can any of our attacking players, think about it logically, people. How can any of our attacking players really and truly exploit any exploit any space if there isn't space? You have to move and pass the ball to... Disrupt the opposition. This is not a striker. This is not a winger. Cola, we know, he had that. That he had that on smash. But if he wasn't consistently being an outlet like that, a fullback wouldn't have to stay with him or wouldn't have to stay out wide. To which there would be no space for um, Ozil to obviously get on the ball and get some one twos and float to the other side. Think about it, people. If Cola wasn't running, Barnsley logically doesn't have anything to do. So what is he gonna do? He's gonna shuffle inside. He's gonna shuffle inside. To which the Burnley winger is gonna tuck in. There's less space to exploit. If Ozil runs in behind, it's 2v1. If, I don't know, Aubameyang runs in behind, there's men, to, there's men to cover, essentially, people. So, you see, you don't really get anywhere. Um, so, for it to work, for the movement to work, you need our fullbacks. And I felt Kola, I'm sorry if I'm holding this properly, start to finish, Kola really stayed wide, stayed high, stayed wide, and allowed us to, to really exploit. And Maitland-Niles, Maitland-Niles, they're same, really. I don't know why I switched them, but Maitland-Niles, they're same. And then when you consider our striking men in Lacazette and Aubameyang, you could see how the four would press together, essentially. And then you'd obviously have Gwendozi and Xhaka and the rest of them. But, yeah, man, again, we can't draw too many conclusions. It's Burnley. It's a game we expect to win. It's a game we should be expecting to win by a scoreline like this. In fact, you probably they probably shouldn't have scored, really and truly. That's the only bad point I could look at. But, oh, gosh. Um... Yeah, so on that note, there's really not much more to look at from a tactical point of view, to be honest with you people. Um, so I knew Socrates had a good game, but obviously watching the game again, he had a super game. I felt Kohler again, superb. Make Lanau, superb. Um, in an attacking sense, Ozil, superb. Um, I was impressed with... Um, who else was I impressed with? I actually liked what El Nene was doing here and there. There was in an opening stages, he looked a bit shaky. There was one time he failed to deal with the cross, but... Um, I mean, an impending threat, but other than that, Played better than I thought, and I gave him a six in my player ratings. Probably bumped that up to a seven, but um, yeah, there's not too much more to add on that front, so I'm gonna get out of your hair. People, DG, deluded, comment, subscribe, and do the rest if you wish. I'm out. Thank you for watching.